What's the crack lads? Welcome back. It is Thursday and of course we do have new player of the week. So we've got Phil Foden. We also have a couple of players that we want to talk about here. Foden is obviously the pick of them. But we have Kavara there, Leno there as well, Romero, McAllister, Lukaku, Galeno. There's some nice players in here, but it comes with a big but, right? I do feel like that these cards now are kind of being really, really, really threatening to not even be spinnable. I mean, Foden's card is nice, but there are a couple of lackluster skills with him and stuff like that that he's missing maybe as well. Um, the rest of the player pack here is going to be kind of similar to players that you would have probably had before. Now, that's not to say that these players can't dominate for you, but when you're taking a look at the likes of this guy as just a standard fox in the box with 74 balance, 71 type possession, and 74 acceleration. It's, listen, he's got a face only a mother could love, man, and I feel like that this is a player that kind of like signifies the problem with the player of the week. Because these cards, if you spin from, are literally just fodder at this stage. Because you can get free players very, very, very simply in this. If you've got the free Neymar, there is no comparison between a guy like this and free Neymar if you got it. So I do feel like they need to entice people to spin. Maybe that's a case of giving all these player boosters. I don't know. I'm, I'm open to suggestions in, in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think they should do. I do feel like that they've made a bit of strides in it with Romero and Foden having boosters this week um, is pretty decent. But of course, if for every Foden, you're going to have this guy Sanchez, who has 90 aggression as a destroyer, 79 speed. This is before the manager boost, obviously. So it's going to be a plus two to every stat you see here. So his defensive awareness becomes 85. This guy is pretty decent. He is pretty decent with blocker interception, aerial superiority, good acceleration and speed. Balance and tight possession don't really matter too much for defensive base players. And his jumping and physical contact are extremely good as well. But a lot of players like this, a lot of their stats don't go to the 90. And the 90 seems to be a very good stat now with the base your main players around. You know, it's very hard for a centre-back to compete with the likes of Maldini, the likes of Aldair, the likes of Cannavaro, Puyol, Tommy Yashu, Araujo. We can go on and on and on. So I feel like that if you are going to be taking the risk to sign a player that you actually want from a, you know, from a selection of 11, I feel like you can actually get burnt quite a bit. We also have Ariola. This guy has featured before as a player of the week, if I'm not mistaken. The only goalkeeper, uh, Reflex is the only one that goes to 90. He does have low punt and long throw. Pretty standard keeper, lads. You know what you're going to be getting. He's 195 CM as well, so he doesn't need jump. And his reach is quite solid for a keeper this tall. Very good presence in the goal. Danny Pareo, a lot of people like this guy. Um, his tight possession and balance are a little... Well, his tight possession is fine, but his balance is a little bit low for the style of card. But look at this pace, man. Look at the speed and acceleration. When you're competing with players like Honus, listen, I know that you're talking about there's a completely different conversation to be had about premium players and free-to-play players. I class these player of the week players as free-to-play players. They aren't really to be compared with, you know, the likes of the premium, premium guys like Honus, Rummy, um, Samuel Eto'o, Romario Booster, any of them guys, right? But I do feel like that the GP versions of these cards are so similar... Okay, and I also feel like the free versions of the cards that they've given us, like Neymar, Maradona, Costa Corta, Songkrasen, uh, any of those guys, Arhan, Sally, any of those guys, right, they do kind of dominate above these. And this guy's speed and acceleration, I, I know people are going to say like, oh, but I use him in the hole, he doesn't need to run. Yeah, but why use this player when you can use somebody from the GP market like Pedri that's going to outperform in him in, in every stat? And if you're not worried about stats at all, then that's a completely different separation from that argument. But I do feel like this card is a bit weak as well. Galeno is just pure speed. His speed and acceleration is huge, but his balance and tight possession is woeful for a left-sided midfielder. Now, he has the booster, which boosts up his finishing quite a bit, but you're still only going to get the finish at 85, which is nice. Um, ball control and dribbling is going to be 90, and of course, his speed and acceleration is going to be way past the 90, uh, into the 95, 98 um, there. And he does have unwavering form with a shooting plus, plus three, and that's obviously going to be tied to his A rating, his A live update as well. Long range curler, long range shooting, but no dribble skills. So yeah, it's another interesting choice. He's had a few before as well. Lukaku, very strong, very physical, obviously with the finishing and the physical contact. Acceleration is quite decent for a player this big and this bulky. Tight possession and balance is not. So you have to use him as a target man. And I would say that even though he's got some nice player skills, he doesn't have aerial superiority. He doesn't, doesn't have heading. He does have acrobatic finishing and first time shot and one touch pass. But you can't train any other stats in him. So again, it's a bit of a bust of a player. We also have McAllister and Lino. This guy, Lino or Lino or Lino. You say Lino, I say Lino. You say Tomato, 
I say to Mato. This guy with the dribbling and the speed and the acceleration as an attack at full back is pretty, is pretty good, man. Standard form, pretty decent one touch pass outside curler, and of course, track back and interception. I like this card. But is it worth actually spinning for? I would say no. The same can be said for McAllister. His speed and acceleration as a box to box, a box to box, doesn't compare with even standard Barilla um, or even you know the likes of Free Bellingham or standard Bellingham. Nice skills. Obviously, I like a player that does have one touch pass, true pass, and low lofted and interception for my box to box. If you can get those skills, it's a pretty decent card with unwavering form. But none of his stats are going to go into the 90s, which is kind of a little bit behind where most of the gameplay is at at the moment. And of course, we also have Romero rounding off this kind of like non-top tier players. Now, this guy's not bad. He's going to have all his defensive stats into the 90s apart from engagement. And that doesn't really matter because he's down as a destroyer. Speed and acceleration are solid. Jump and physical, uh, physical contact are solid. I do feel like this guy is the pick of the pack. Man marking, interception, blocker, aerial superiority, acrobatic clearance, sliding, tackle and heading with fight and spirit. Perfect. That's all you need from a player like this as your destroyer. If you're looking to, you know, have a really good destroyer in here, this guy could do the business for you. And then, of course, we have Kavara and Foden. Kind of similar players on different wings. Um... Kavara has been having a great season again this year. Uh, I'd love United to get him, but he does have double touch and soul control, but you can't give him flip flap because you can't learn any skills. You can't train him in a different way. Acceleration is pretty decent. His type possession is pretty decent. His balance is pretty decent. But I feel like even his standard card does compare quite a bit, so I wouldn't really go heavy for it. And then Foden down as a booster. So Foden has been unbelievable for City lately. Um, his booster is going to take his acceleration, balance, and dribbling up over the 90, as well as the ball control over 90 with the manager boost. And he's still going to have finishing at 80, tight position at 87, speed at 87, 88 if you're using 10 hag. Kicking power is pretty decent. This is a very, very solid hole player. I would use him as an attacking midfielder because of his low passing. He's going to have everything pretty much perfectly balanced. One of the best, most balanced cards that Konami have released is this card, definitely. Especially, I would play him as an AMF, 100%, because he does have some fairly decent stats and skills with the passing and the shooting. True pass and weighted and low lofted, as well as first time shot, rising shot, double touch and long range. So this is a very, 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 very good card. I won't say that it's a phenomenal card, because I do feel like that because you can't add flip-flap to him or any of that, that's kind of going to take from your attack midfielder. And also, his finishing, I would like it to be 85, but it's only 80. So just small little things. But I do feel like this is probably one of the best cards in the pack as well. It's worth spinning. If you spin your tree and you get your free one, you get Romero and Foden, brilliant. But if you got any of the rest of them, I think it's a bust. And I think you'd feel a little bit hard done by. Even Kavara, which is not the best card of his that they've ever released. But that is it, lads, for a quick player of the week. Let me know if you guys are going to spin. We will be spinning later in our live stream. We'll go through everything with Season 5. And, of course, what I think will be coming quite soon as well. So keep it locked here. We'll be back with another review quite soon.